Welcome to the Field House at Lakeshore Foundation in Birmingham, Alabama. You're tuning in for the 2024 Eastern Semifinal for the United States Wheelchair Rugby Association. Well, the Western Semifinal took place a little while ago, and those teams have already punched their ticket to the National Championship coming up here in a couple weeks in Tampa, Florida. NEP, University of Michigan, the War Warriors, Oscar Mike, and Portland have all made their place there. And now Lakeshore takes up its chance to make a run at a sixth world, uh, national championship against WASA, CKRI. We'll tell you more about what all those initials mean here in just a minute. The players are you know, greeting each other at center court, getting ready for the tip-off here at the Lakeshore Foundation. If you haven't been to Lakeshore, please come visit us in Birmingham. It's a very exciting place with the flags of all the nations that have competed at Lakeshore hanging here. Official Marianne Duda is tipping off, and Zion Reddington for Lakeshore gets the tip against Ryan for Wassa, and they set up their offense. Ben Tomlinson, number three, Bob Lahano, number seven, and Jake Daly, number 23, round out the starting lineup for Lakeshore, and Zion takes it in for a try. Marty Ewing, a, a past member of the Team USA level, is uh, passed it in, and Wass is making a drive. Do a little tap from Zion. Zion goes after the ball. Ryan's got it against Jake, and they're tied up, triple teaming. Looks like Lakeshore's going to force a turnover, and they have. Zion saved the ball right before it goes out of the out of bounds. Jake Daly's driving up the court. Jake's also been a member in the past of USA Wheelchair Rugby. Was a member of the 2022 World Team. So Lakeshore goes up 2-0 after forcing that turnover. You know, in a lot of ways, wheelchair rugby is a game of turnovers. You'll see it almost like a tennis match, going back and forth and back and forth. Uh, but turnovers or unforced errors become the main thing. And another unforced error. There we go. Out of bounds, Lakeshore's ball. If you haven't figured it out already, Lakeshore is the home team for the finals here, wearing white. Wass is wearing their black and blue jerseys. And a foul. So what's happening there, when you inbound the ball, there's 10 seconds uh, to get the ball inbounds, and then 12 to get it across center line. Instead, we have a foul, and go to an out-of-bounds play. Into the penalty box goes member of Team Canada. Zion's bringing it up the court, trying to set up the offense as they move forward. The person will stay in the penalty box for a period of time or until the opposing team makes a point. So Travis Morale will stay in the penalty box until up. There we go. Zion crosses the line, taking a 3-0 lead for Lakeshore here early in the first quarter at the Eastern Semifinals. Travis called for the inbound play. The reason he did so is because you can block a player coming out of the penalty box. So by calling for the inbound, that leaves him the ability to get out and participate. Marty Ewing bringing the, the ball up. Strong hit from, from Zion Rayton, but a good pass and a score. That's Wasa's first score of the game. Bob Lahano, past Paralympic athlete, passed in to Jake Daly, Jake to Zion, and Zion's double team, triple teamed in the backcourt, passes it over to Jake Daly in time. Made it in, in less than 12 seconds. Daly back to Zion, he was wide open for another try. Wheelchair rugby is a game made up of multiple sports. There's no other game like it out there, no other sport like it. It is a co-educational sport. Lakeshore is proud to have uh, a five-time Paralympic medalist on their team. Uh, we'll hear more about Amy in a second. Outlet pass to a wide open person. Wasa goes 4-2. Uh, Jake Daly is bringing the ball up the court. Wasa's 
spreading out, trying to spread out the offense as they go. And Jake's taking it coast to coast for the next try. 5-2. We'll see Kyle Peterson for Wassa in this game quite a bit. He and Travis who has the ball right now. We bring passing it back and forth. Zion got a good hit in the backcourt. Marty Ewing has it. Double teamed. Zion's doing some key defense. Kyle has it and passes it. And it's a score. Travis picked up the ball on a bounce right before the goal line. If that ball had gone out, that would not have been a score. Bob Lahano for the inbound pass, trying to find a place. Um, you ought to watch Bob. Bob is laser focused with his nubs. He can put that ball anywhere like a the expert volleyball player. And so, and Zion takes cross for a try. Lakeshore is maintaining their lead. Marty to Kyle Peterson. Kyle's bringing the ball up. Here comes Zion. Another hit. Kyle passes to Travis. Bob, great defense in the backcourt. And we have a timeout for a wheel. You know, there's so much hitting that goes on in wheelchair rugby. That was one of the reasons that the, the men who created the sport years ago, they wanted something that was contact, full contact sport. So they created the sport that combines elements of, of ice hockey and uh, wheelchair football, wheelchair basketball, a little bit of volleyball thrown in there for good measure. And the only real parts of rugby that come into play in wheelchair rugby <laughs> are, the, are some of the terminology, like the word try. Oh. And another penalty. Ben Tomlinson touched the loss of player. And when he was setting up for the inbounds play, which is not allowed, so Ben goes into the penalty box. Uh, until Wassa scores or until enough time lapses off. Travis is bringing the ball up the court, was able to zig around Bob. Outlet pass to a wide open Marty. And Marty kills a little bit of clock and then crosses the line. You'll watch that. Sometimes you'll wonder if you're new to the sport, why are the players not sprinting or why are they not uh, scoring when it's the, the goal is wide open? It's some clock management techniques. Uh, just like you'll see in other sports where uh, in basketball they may hang out at the top of the key or in football they may um, let a lot of clock run. So Zion gets the inbound and takes it coast to coast for the next try. We're about halfway through here in the first quarter of the finals of the Eastern Semifinal for the USWRA Eastern Semifinals. If you've just now joined us, thanks for joining us here at Lakeshore Foundation in Birmingham, Alabama. This should be a tight game going on. Uh, all the way to the wire. Travis Morale coming up against Zion Reddington. Those are two Paralympic hopefuls right there. And bad pass to Bob Lahana who batted it back to Zion. Zion's double teamed and coming free. And he'll take it on in against Marty uh, for the try. Again, turnovers can be deadly in this game for sure. And oof. A little bit of stumble there. Marty was able to recover the ball. So you'll notice that Travis and Zion are sprinting down the court together. Oh, and Zion's got a foul grabbing on to Travis's arm. He'll go to the penalty box for that one. Uh, there are, in a lot of ways, wheelchair rugby is like chess with different types of players. And I, I was wrong on that one. Uh, Zion did not go to the penalty box. Uh, Bob Lahano to Zion Redditing for another try. And Lakeshore is up 9-5. to five. Marty into... Okay, we have some, some backcourt uh, defense. If you look at what's going on with it. And a timeout by Wassa. They were nearing their 12-second limit to get the ball across center court and call the timeout. You'll see quite a few of those in this sport. That's one of the greatest uh, um, points of strategy in the sport. So I was saying before, wheelchair rugby was created by some, uh, some quads who wanted to get back into full court sports. Uh, they enjoyed tennis, they enjoyed wheelchair basketball, but they really wanted something again. So they created this sport with elements from 
a bunch of different sports. So it's a uh, sport created by wheelchair athletes, for wheelchair athletes. Uh, high scoring, high paced. Like I said, hang on, you're, you're in for a wild ride. We've had a substitute on the Wassa side. Kyle gets the ball from the inbound and takes it in for a try, nine to six. Right before the game, the, the coach for Wassa gave me some of the nicknames of the, the team, and we'll let you know what those are throughout the time. Zion Reddington zigzagged through some defensive strategies to get all the way through to the end and for another try. Take us up 10-6 with three minutes to go. Eddie Brosnan has come into the game. Eddie's nickname is Steady Eddie. And uh, you'll watch his, his steadiness there in a, um, a defensive chair. And he's recently switched to a defensive chair. He's been a, a veteran player for a long time. And an offensive chair. Zion got an arm on the players. He was headed over to score again, so that's an automatic point. That was the penalty last time that I, I missed call. So Bob Lahano and Zion Reddington. Zion's being double teamed deep in the backcourt. Remember, he only has 12 seconds to get across. Zion to Jake Daly. Time is nearing it. Ah, pass out to Bob Lahano. So Bob and Ben Tomlinson are in the front court. Uh, now Jake Daly crosses over, and it's a three against two. And for the try goes Jake Daly. Number eight calls for the inbound. He was locked up by the defense near half court. That, has to, that means everybody has to reshuffle um, and go again. One of the things you'll notice in wheelchair rugby uh, when uh, either it's a turnover or it's coming back from a timeout or something along those lines, another turnover. Jake Daly knocked the ball out of someone's hand into, into Lahano's hand, but there was a foul on the play. So Bob and Jake Daly, and now everybody's just killing time. In order for Travis to get back on the court, Lakeshore has to score. This gives everybody a chance to rest a little bit, but they will be jockeying for position so that when Travis comes back in, as he just did, calling for the inbound, they'll have better position on each other and be able to drive the court. At least that's the hope. And Timeout called by Wassa. That's their second timeout of the period. Timeout was called by Ryan Ingleby. His nickname is Ingle Beast. And uh, he went, um, had the privilege of coming to Birmingham to play on the uh, U.S. Low Point team during the World Games and earned the MVP uh, during the 2023 Low Point Nationals. So. Uh, Ryan is definitely the Ingle Beast for Wassa. There is a low pointer in his defensive chair. Great pass to Travis down, down two high pointers. Two offensive players, Zion Rainton and Travis. Morale going against each other. You have to hold on to that ball, maintain, maintain possession, and up. Oh, got a blown tire. And you can't thank the staff of these teams enough for what they do. Imagine a NASCAR pit crew and an athletic trainer all rolled into one. That's what happens when staff comes out to trade out for a tire, broken axle, uh, to fix the straps on, on someone's wheelchair uh, to keep them anchored in, into the spot. We're rolling again. wassa has got the ball. Travis Morales bringing in. They're setting up their offense. They're trying to pull the defense away to one side. And open up a middle there in the key. The word key comes from the sport of basketball. Again, Zion Reddington grabbing the arm. Automatic point since it was in the key, on key defense. Bob Lahano pulling up for the inbound. Uh, they've locked down uh, everyone except Ben Tomlinson. Ben got it back to Bob Lahano. Uh, and an outlet pass to Zion who's wide open. And Zion will burn a couple of seconds before they score. We were talking about time management early. Now that we're under two minutes left in the quarter, um, Lakeshore is going to try to set it up to get the last score of the quarter and the first score of the next one. 
And of course, Wass is going to try to do the same thing. Wass has got a score in about 10 seconds. But there's a, oh, almost another turnover. That was a great, great work there uh, by Wassa to get that in and get the try. Kyle Peterson saved that try from the end. So Bob Lahano to Ben Tomlinson, back to Bob Lahano. Jake Daly is across the court. Zion is double teamed in the backcourt. Here comes Kyle catching up with Bob. Zion has the ball. They're going to try for a try here at the 50-second mark or so. That'll mean that Lakeshore will definitely get the ball before the end. Travis with some great defense keeps Zion out of the key and out of the hole. Zion goes in at 48. Close enough. So now the play clock is set back at 40. Here comes Wassa with a good inbound pass. They're going to try to score quickly if they can. Uh, they may try to do some gamesmanship to prevent Lakeshore from getting that last one. But a good pass across midcourt needed the pass to Kyle Peterson, whose name is Shaggy. Got him tied up there then. Oh, but outlet to Travis. And Travis will score with 23 seconds left on the clock for the period. So the shot clock is now out of commission. Uh, Lakeshore can maintain the ball for the rest of the period. Almost a pickoff by Travis, but Zion was able to pull that out on the play. And again, I'm going to try to score with less than two seconds left on the clock so that Wasa will not get another point before the end of the period. Up. And a player was forced off the court, causing uh, no point. Let's see what's up here. So it wasn't a force off in that sense. It was a penalty force off. And so with 4.8 seconds, Ben Tomlinson's coming in to inbound the ball. Ben, uh, I guess you're, you're never a former United States Marine Corps soldier. That was a great play. Ben to Jake Daly to Zion for the score. One second left, and Wasp will hold the ball. So at the end of the first period in the championship game for the Eastern semifinal here at Lakeshore Foundation, Lakeshore is up 15 to 10. It'll be a two-minute break here between periods as the teams get a little water and go from there. If you are catching it on the camera at all, you may see that uh, some of the players have spray bottles they spray all over themselves. Depending on where the spinal cord injury is, some of the players playing today do not sweat. Can you imagine not sweating? Uh, they, they struggle with maintaining body heat and body temperature. And those spray bottles, which are industrial uh, pesticide spray bottles that you might buy at Home Depot or something like that, uh, they filled up with water and squirt themselves down and cool themselves down uh, when they're in a timeout or uh, uh, when there's been a substitution. I mentioned before that Lakeshore Foundation uh, has, has been around and has been serving uh, the community. It's an official Olympic and Paralympic training site here in Birmingham, Alabama. The Lakeshore wheelchair rugby team has been around for a long time. They had five national championships in the early 2000s, and they're hoping to uh, add one to that this year uh, when they head to Tampa here in a couple of weeks. I also mentioned that I was going to give you some more information about what WASA meant, and uh, they have an incredibly long name, <laughs> the WASA CKRI Lightning. Uh, WASA stands for the Wisconsin Adaptive Sports Association, and they're a combined team with the Courage Kinney Sports and Recreation Program. And um, Courage Kinney itself is a combined name of the Courage Center and the Sister Kinney Institute. So the team in Minnesota came together with the team in, in Minnesota uh, to uh, Wisconsin and Minnesota came together to form uh, the WASA CKRA. CKRI Lightning. They're coached by Sarah Hutchins, who was the 2023 Wheelchair Rugby Coach of the Year from the USWRA. And uh, uh, what, a, what a firecracker uh, she is. Lakeshore is coached by Tommy Sullivan, a long time veteran of the sport. And uh, Sully, as he's known, was the first ever player here at Lakeshore Foundation recruited by Kevin Moore. And I'll tell you more about Kevin here in a minute. We're back here with play in the second quarter. 15-10 Lakeshore. 
Wasa has crossed the midline. And Lakeshore has set up their key defense. So you'll see a lot of struggle here. Oh, they were able to get it past Jake Daly. And Shaggy uh, just scored for Wasa. In baseball, it's called a run. In football, it's called a touchdown. In wheelchair rugby, it's called a try. Bob Lahano pounds the ball to Jake Daly, who's wide open, and takes it in for a try. Here at the beginning of the second period uh, in the championship game of the Eastern Semifinals of the USWRA. Travis Morale coming up the court. Marty Ewing knocks Zion out from trying to come across, and that worked. And allows Travis to take it all the way across the line. 16-11. Now Wassa has got to force some turnovers from Lakeshore this period of, to close the gap. Lakeshore has got to make sure they're working on ball management in order to maintain their lead. Jake Daly, coast to coast for Lakeshore. Travis is an incredible uh, veteran player uh, for Team Canada. Oh, great, great pass from Shaggy as we were talking about, all the way to Travis on a hit from Zion to score for, for Wassa. Travis won a bronze medal in the Paralympics in 2008 and a silver in 2012 and was also a part of the teams for 2016 and 2020. Zion Reddington wide open, no defense on that one. Marty Ewing calls for the inbound, number two for Wassa. Marty and, and here they come. Wassa trying to maintain their offensive positions. And they were able to get it across the line. Bob Lahana going head to head with Travis. Now Bob is also um, a Paralympic medalist, 2004 in Athens. So it's fun to see those two medalists battling it out there in the front court. Bob Lahano with a great um, lob pass to a wide open Jake Daly. Ah, uh, here we go again. Killing a little clock. It's not just to kill the clock, it's to allow the defense to set up behind Jake, and they have. So they've locked down Travis here in midcourt between Ben and Zion. Uh, you'll notice uh, we were talking about the two different types of chairs the offensive chair, the defensive chair. The defensive chair has a fork as they call it, in front of it. It's something that sticks out that allows the defensive player to lock down the, the other chairs. The offensive chairs are, are more balanced with a lower center of gravity for uh, extra speed. Lots of passing, grateful for, for that, for Marty to be able to cross the line. Bob Lahano looking for an open player. He's running out of time. Gets it into Zion. Zion is still deep in the territory. He's able to pass to Jake Daly. Will we get it out without a timeout? Yes. Great passing. Jake to Zion all the way to Bob, who was able to break free. And now Bob's allowing the defense to set up behind him and scores. Wasa driving. They're going to need a pass to get out of purgatory. They got it. Will they hold on to the ball? And the veteran from Team Canada comes up with it. Up. Oh. Zion knocked it out of his hand, but Marty was there to scoop it up. Again, Wassa can't afford any more turnovers. They're going to close the gap. And they're in. Ryan Ingleby, the Ingle Beast. Coach was telling me right before the game that Ryan enjoys traveling. He's been able to go around the country and around the world to do some developmental camps. Zion Reddington for another try. Ryan spends his days working in GIS technology, helping make maps. The sport of wheelchair rugby uh, at all levels, including uh, the, the world-class level for the Paralympic teams and the, and the uh, national teams, uh, so it has a wide range of ages. You're probably looking out here, probably seeing a great deal. Zion Reddington, obviously the youngest at 17, and uh, with several players in their 50s uh, here with Bob Lahana on the court, being one of those. 
Another try for the Team Canada's member of WASA. Lahano into Jake Daly. Jake's got both Zion on the left, and when Ben stopped to uh, try to lock someone down, Zion gets picked, allows Jake to take it all the way in. Almost. Still Wassa ball. That was a good tip by Zion. Almost a turnover from Wassa. Ryan into Kyle Peterson. Bob Lahano's got Kyle locked down in the backcourt. Can he keep him? Nope. He breaks free. Zion and Travis are hanging out in the key. Zion will come over and put a hit, but it's point. Another try for Wassa. 22-18. Wassa's closed it by one here in the second period. Pass from Zion Reddington to Jake Daly. Jake's going to allow the defense to set it behind him and kill a little clock. And we just had a tire go. Was that on our court? Yes, it was. And so Shaggy's lost the tire. So here comes... Um, the Unsung Heroes. I bet you, if you haven't been able to pick it up on the camera, you might have seen some action on the Wassa bench in the last few minutes. Uh, they've had to change a tire. Uh, wheelchair rugby tires are reinforced. They've got a, a metal rim, so it's much more difficult to change a rugby tire than it is like a bicycle tire. Um, and with the, uh, the wheel guard on the outside, sometimes it's hard metal or definitely uh, a hard surface no matter, even if it's plastic. It's sometimes hard to get the tools inside to do that. And if you look carefully as the camera pans back and forth, you're going to see the, the pit crew on Wassa's side uh, changing another two very, very quickly. Ryan put a big hit. Zion put a big hit, excuse me, on Kyle. And we've been able to recover the ball for Lakeshore. Long pass from Zion, lob to Bob Lahano. Bob got some uh, defensive help or picking help from Jake Daly and another try. That got the extra point back. We're now, we're now in the zone. You hear, you may hear other sounds that don't seem to sync up with the sounds you're hearing on our game. The battle for third place here at the Eastern Sectionals is taking place behind us, and uh, Brooks Bandits and the Casey Revolution are battling it out. And right now, uh, Brooks Bandits is up by four in the battle for third place. Another try from Wassa. Bob Lahano into Jake Daly. And you just got to love that, that nod on the back of, of when he pulled, Jake pulls up his hair. He and Shaggy ought to have a contest if he's got the longest hair. Great battle. And Jake calls the timeout right before he heads out of bounds to save the play. Smart play from Jake Daly. Both teams head to the bench. Sometimes during timeouts um, uh, called for strategic reasons, the teams don't head to the bench. Everybody's going to get a little more water, take a breather, some input from their coaches. I mentioned that Sully was uh, Tommy Sullivan, the coach for Lakeshore Demolition. He's the first ever player. Kevin Orr recruited him. Now, Kevin is a legend in this sport. Uh, he's a Paralympic coach not only for Team USA, but for Team Canada and for Team Japan. Uh, he's been all around the world. Kevin now serves uh, a very important role here at Lakeshore, and we're grateful to have him uh, on staff. But he would, the first phone call that Kevin made when he uh, was founding the, the wheelchair rugby team here at Lakeshore was to Tommy Sullivan. Lakeshore has set up their offense. They're waiting their team to the left-hand side. Bob and Jake come across to block, allowing a wide open space for Zion to run, uh, run through, to wheel through. Very much like a push-pull play that you might see on, uh, in, in football in the red zone. Travis Morale, he's got the ball, trying to, find, trying to get the right pass. Got to have a hand in his face, but was able to get it across the midline. Into the hands of Kyle Peterson. Jake Daly trying to knock it out of Kyle's hands. Zion and Travis going at it. Um, trying to get position, we're unable, uh, Kyle was unable to get it to Travis. Now everybody's wide open and the pass is in for another try. Bob Lahano calls for inbound.
frees him up. Doesn't have to get locked down. Is now in, uh, inbounding the ball. Inbounds it to Jake Daly. It was touchy. Outlet pass from Jake over the back to, tr to Zion. And Zion against Ryan for the score. 26-20 with about two and a half minutes left here in the period. Uh, again, now clock management will come into play. Wassa needs to score. They need to get the last score of this period. So they're going to try to score soon but effectively so they can get a third possession before the end of the period, more than likely. Travis is locked up by Jake Daly. Can't get around going around to the other side. There's Zion in the middle. Is he able to squeeze through? He is is able to squeeze through for the point. 155 left. Lakeshore up by five. And a big time outlet pass to Jake Daly. And they're not giving him pressure because they want Jake to score more quickly so they can get the ball back. You may see, yep, you're seeing him. Right now, Jake just gets shoved over the line by a player from Wassa. One of the techniques, to, if, if, you're, if you're lollygagging and you need the ball back, just force the player over the line and you get the ball back fast enough. So, Eagle Beast with the um, ball in for Wassa. Travis Morale on the long ball. And here they come. And they'll get across. Wide open. Ryan Ingleby for the score. 132 left. Now Lakeshore is going to try to try to burn some clock here. Zion double team back to Bob Lahano. Here comes Bob. Travis knocked him down. Time is short, but a good pass from Bob to Jake Daly, who's wide open. Jake's trying to gonna run the clock down. Whether he can get it down another 25 seconds or not is yet to be seen. Yeah, here comes Travis to, to push him over. 107 left. Half times in the sport of Wichita rugby are eight minutes long. And during halftime, we'll tell you a little bit about the history of Lakeshore Foundation, a little bit about uh, the rules of the game, if you're new to the game, a little bit about classification. Turnover! Turnover! Bob Lahana was able to scoop up that ball at midcourt, uh, passed it out into the open space, and now Lakeshore is going to try to lock it down. 30 seconds left on the play clock, 43 seconds left on the game clock for the half. They may choose Tommy Jell and some, some orders out. I bet you they're going to get close, and they're going to call a timeout to reset the, the play clock at 25. Wassa with their key defense. Everybody just sitting on the court uh, while the strategy move is played here. Everybody's watching the clock, and there's the timeout. Jake Daly gets the official call at 15 seconds. So Lakeshore will have the ball, and we'll try to score in such a way to not leave any time for Wassa to score the last goal of the half. And then Lakeshore will then try very much to score the first goal. What you will notice there was Bob just kind of put the ball out in the open. That allowed the clock to not start. And the point is scored because of a foul in the key. It gives Wassa eight seconds, more time than Lakeshore wanted them to have. Jake Daly knocks the ball out of the hands of Shaggy and gives it wide open pass. Zion is screaming down the court, but no final score. 29-22 Lakeshore over Wassa. We head into our eight-minute halftime here at the Fieldhouse at Lakeshore Foundation in Birmingham, Alabama. Talking a little bit about the founding of the game of wheelchair, bas wheelchair basketball, where did that come from? A wheelchair rugby a little while ago. And it was started by a couple of guys in Canada who were looking for a way to have a more full contact sport. Um, so they pulled in a volleyball onto a regulation sized basketball court. They created a key, even though they call it a key, it's much like the area right around the goal for a hockey goalie. 
and they protect that um, in some ways uh, like a soccer or a hockey goal. And you'll see two uh, cones uh, there. Those cones are inviolable. You touch one of those cones, it's an automatic turnover. Uh, the key, uh, in the same way that in basketball you can't stay in the key for very long, you can't stay in the key of wheelchair rugby for very long uh, if you're on offense. And so you can stack up your guys there as well. Um, so it has you have 10 seconds to get the ball in from out of bounds, 12 seconds to get the ball across half court. There's a 40-second play clock. And by the way, Kevin Orr, I was mentioning before, uh, one of the um, uh, superstars um, of the sport, a Hall of Fame member of the sport of wheelchair rugby, uh, was a part of the team that developed the 40-second clock uh, for wheelchair rugby. Uh, and that goes back uh, a number of years. So 40 seconds to score. Um, fouls are a lot like basketball, but they have the penalty box, similar to hockey. Um, and the rules, of course, have, have evolved over time. Uh, wheelchair rugby was a dem demonstration sport in 1996 um, a pri uh, for the Olympics in Atlanta, and it became an official Olympic sport in 2020. The United States won their last Olympic gold in 2008, last Paralympic gold in 2008, um, and then they won silver in Tokyo. Um, this year's team has had some uh, change over uh, leadership a couple years ago with Joe Delagrave, uh, a veteran player for Team USA, taking over as coach. And they're, they're ranked number one in the world right now, headed toward the Paralympics in Paris, coming up in late August and early September. And uh, as I mentioned, Zion Reddington for Lakeshore number 12 uh, is a Paralympic hopeful. Travis Morale, uh, uh, Team Canada, uh, a WASA member number 44 on, on WASA, um, has, a, has, a, has already been at four Paralympiads and will be back uh, for a fifth. So you're watching two of the best in the world on the court right now, and hopefully you'll be able to see them uh, battle it out. Um, the United States uh, wheelchair rugby team made um, uh, punched their ticket for Paris at the Parapan Games, bringing home gold when they were in Chile. Canada had to travel to Australia uh, to uh, punch their ticket for Paris, uh, but the, the Canada team is headed there as well. You know, wheelchair rugby has been featured in pop culture quite a bit. If you were a fan of the TV show Friday Night Lights from a number of years ago, you know that one of the stars of that show uh, in the fictional tale um, sustained a spinal cord injury as a football quarterback and wanted to get back into full contact sports. And many of uh, the players that were also in the movie Murder Ball, the documentary Murder Ball, uh, took place, uh, uh, came and helped out to film a number of scenes over a number of episodes in the show Friday Night Lights. Also, the show uh, uh, My Name is Earl featured uh, an episode called Killer Ball, a direct descendant of the documentary of Murder Ball, um, uh, to play, play that up for, uh, for jokes. So we're coming back a minute to go here in the half, uh, in, at halftime before the second half begins. Players are stretching each other out a little bit, shaking off the, uh, the sweat and uh, we're going to start with an inbound play. Lakeshore does have the ball to start the second half. Um, Bob Lahano here at midcourt. Ball goes in to Dell. Dell was an alternate on a past Paralympic team. Dell is a super fast 3.0 and is headed down the court. He's going to go in for the try. And automatic point for the foul in the key. If you get a chance, watch Dell's face uh, during his time on the court. He's a very intense person. Also, Christian in for uh, Lakeshore is one of the low corners. Big hit from Zion on the Travis Morale at the time of the pass, uh, flipping Travis over. Again, we talked about the, the support team on the sidelines. They're going to come over and help get Travis upright. Um, more than likely, if you're new to the sport or, or, or not around wheelchairs often, you might know that a day chair, uh, an everyday wheelchair, uh, can be fairly light. You know, something that you got to push around all the time. But the rugby chairs are fairly heavy. Uh, it's supposed to be heavy. It's supposed to have that that weight to it, so it slams 
uh, and, and to others. So a lot of times you may see, if you watch wheelchair basketball, you may see a wheelchair basketball player pop up on his or her own, but you'll never see that. Well, I won't say never. You'll rarely see that from wheelchair rugby because of the way the chairs. What a great pass from Bob Lahana, one of his volleyball taps all the way down court to Dell for another try. Marty Ewing inbounding to Travis Morale. Travis zigs around Bob Lahano, comes up to midcourt. Dell almost gets a wheel on him, and Shaggy takes it in for a try on the Wassa side. Uh, Sid Christian had never played uh, wheelchair sports uh, before 2017. He's number 11 on Lakeshore, one of the older players. Can Zion get to the ball before the goal line? Yes, he can. Good speed. Um, so Sid um, had been hanging out and rehabbing here at Lakeshore. And Tommy Sullivan, Coach Sully, saw him and said, hey, why don't you try the sport of rugby? And so his first uh, tournament was in 2017, and he's been around the game since. Loves playing as a low pointer, as a, uh, um, as a defensive player. Um, a part off of Zion Reddington's new wheelchair, uh, made by Melrose, which is a, um, out of New Zealand, came off. Not sure how that happened. They were able to get it back on again, thanks to the bench support team for what they're doing. Dell's given Marty a race, and... and Almost was able to stop him in midcourt. Travis Morale to Marty Ewing for the try. Great passing on the Wassa side of the ball. Bob Lahano out of bounds again for the inbound. Wassa setting up their defense. Zion trying to get open. They're double teaming him there at midcourt. Dell's bringing the ball up. With that intense face is. Ah! And a turnover. And Wassa will gain a point back that they lost in the first half. Wassa's got to do that six more times. And that you, so you're watch for hands, watch for uh, extra speed, watch for extra hits from Wassa during the second half. Zion's locked down deep in the midcourt, in the backcourt to Dell. We got two seconds left, and we call a timeout, strategic timeout. And in order to protect the ball, we will take it out of bounds here in just a second. Wheelchair rugby chairs, we were talking about Zion needing a repair on his chair and the, the hard hits that they take. They've been compared to everything from uh, Demolition Derby, which is where the, the name for the Lakeshore team, Demolition, comes from, to Mad Max. People have said these chairs look like something out of Mad Max. Just imagine some spikes on these wheels. And you have some folks tearing people up, going up and down the court. It's not bumper cars, though, folks. There are no bumpers <laughs> on these wheelchairs, for sure. Bob Lahano inbounding the ball after the strategic timeout to Zion Reigns, and Zion is double teamed, looking for the pass. Knows he's got a few seconds left. Long pass to Dell. Great pass. Zion's got to get across midcourt to help out. It's three on three. Dell makes a good hit and is able to break free for the try. 33-26 Lakeshore. 6-10 left to go in the third period. Wassa in the backcourt. Six more seconds to bring it across. Can Lakeshore lock them down? Will they make it? Ah, great pass there at the last second. Trap. And they had their team spread out. Great offensive positioning for Wassa with a pass from, from Travis Moran and Marty Ewing. Bob Lahano inbounding the ball. Shuffle into Dell, almost to pick off from Wassa. Wassa really needed that one. Dell locked up. Ah, man, broke free from Marty. Trying not to get hit by Travis. Across midcourt and is wide open. And also sometimes when you see wide open plays, maybe a, a, a fast break look. If, if, you, if you're familiar with basketball, you're wondering why isn't everybody trying harder? Uh, it's a time to recoup. It's a time to breathe um, and, and rest up. And the extra effort sometimes um, is ill spent. It doesn't have any benefit. So you'll see some players back off a little bit. It's not a lack of hustle. It's a strategic move to lower the pulse rate, to maintain body temperature. Like I said earlier, some of these guys struggle to do that. Bob Lahano and Design Reddington in the backcourt. 
He zigs around the lockdown. Sid did a great lockdown of one of the players there. Locked up here at the top of the basketball key. Couple openings for passes. Zion to Dell. Oh, Dell could not come up with a pass. And it goes into this in line. So turnover from Lakeshore to Wassa. Exactly what Wassa needs right now. Lakeshore's got some uh, substitutions coming in. Jake Daly and Ben Tomlinson are coming back into the game. Being waved on uh, by our official. At least I thought, he thought they were. Looks like Dell's, Dell's got a, a, an equipment problem. Chuck Tomlinson, that's Ben's, Ben's dad, is out there helping. Now, Ben knows what he's doing. Ben has been uh, the owner of a hardware shop for a long time. And, is, uh, is able, and he fine-tunes Lakeshore's chairs very, very well and knows what he's doing. Wass says inbound of the ball. Travis Murat has the ball wide open on the right side of the court. Jake Daly's hustling to get over and cut him off. Vector him. Oh, almost a spin. Zion put a hit on him. Zion coming back around for a hit on Shaggy. Can they keep him out? Nope. But great effort on Lakeshore's part to stop that point. They did disrupt. Ah, number 15 called in for. Okay. So Bob was going to take the inbound play. Um, there was something that went wrong. So somebody was trying to call for inbound. It did not work. So Ben... Uh, Thompson is locking in the Ingle Beast back there in the backcourt. Bob Lahano to Jake Daly, wide open in the front court. Jake burns a little time. Zion's keeping his eye out for uh, trying to prevent a turnover. And Jake crosses the line for the point. And now the Ingle Beast. Uh, is uh, going to call in for the inbound, and um, Kyle Peterson needed a little help. He had a, um, on that hit, he had his uh, axle pop out. Travis Morale bringing the ball up court without much pressure. Now Zion goes to him, and of course, an easy pass over to number five for the try. 35 30, 428 left in the third period. Here at the finals for the Eastern Semifinals for United States Wheelchair Rugby Association. The team that uh, wins this game is highly ranked, headed into uh, the finals in Tampa in just a couple of weeks. And uh, a bunch of teams headed there. We'll, we'll give you the lineup for um, the finals here uh, in another break. Marty Ewing in the trip to Travis Morale. Locked down for a second, but was able to break free. And not much pressure from Lakeshore. Lakeshore had their pressure in the back, not in the front court. Loss was able to score easily with Kyle Peterson getting the try. Lahana to Reddington. Reddington's free. Ing Ingleby gives him a little bit of a run, but wide open. Reddington will score for the try. Teams are trying to get an edge. Both teams trying to get an edge on defense. Defenses are breaking down a little bit there as they go. Uh, Marty to Travis. Travis locked down by Bob Alano, was able to break free. It's cut off by Jake Peterson. And another pass into Kyle Peterson. And I combined two names there pretty bad. <laughs> Jake Daly. And Kyle Peterson, I combined them, two names for our teams. Good hit from Travis. Zion maintains the ball and is able to go in for a score. In the game behind me, Brooks Bandits are up by three with five minutes and 25 seconds to go in the third period. That's going to be a tight game, battling it out for third place here at the Eastern Semifinals. Travis Morale into Kyle Peterson for the score. I want to thank the communications team at Lakeshore for all the hard work that they've done putting together the program, keeping everybody engaged with the uh, with uh, everything that's going on, and 
um, keeping the clock and the scoreboard active here on the live feed. Communications team has a lot of moving parts here at Lakeshore. And they strive hard to keep everybody informed and keep the, keep the mission of Lakeshore moving forward. So great job to everybody on the communications team. Jake's able to knock the ball out. It's still Wasa's ball. Clock stops. Ryan comes out to the inbound pass. If you're wondering what's on the hands of the players, you'll see some players wear gloves, other players have tape. That's a athletic tape. Um, think about football player taping up an ankle, that type of thing, but it's turned inside out. The sticky side is on the outside. Uh-oh. So we uh, violated the area around the inbound player that's allowed. So Ben Tomlinson will head to the penalty box. Wasa will have a power play. Uh, you've heard that term in hockey before. So four on three. Ben can be released out of it um, when the play is done. Wasa scores quick because they've got a lot of ground to make up. Uh, if Wasa had been up, they would have been burning time. They would have burned a full 40 seconds off the clock in that time. Bob Lahano calls for um, inbound. So the clock stopped again. Here comes, comes Bob's laser precision hit to Zion. Zion double team deep in the backcourt. Passes to Jake Daly. He's able to break free. Ben's out on the right wing. Is going to come across and stop um, Peterson. And Zion's going to do the same. That three-man weave look. Um, it's a great defense, well, even though nobody touches anybody else. 15 calls for the uh, inbound. So Ryan Ingleby will head all the way across court. Um, Bob Lahano had locked him down with a fork on his defensive chair. Even though the defensive chair, you may not see a lot of speed or you might not see a lot of scoring from the defensive players. They play such a critical role uh, in this uh, game. You might think about um, chess, for instance. Oh, Wasa almost turned and it did turn it over. Zion's locked it down in the backcourt, getting position, finding out where his players are. He's now back in the front court. Locked down by Ryan Ingleby. Jake Daly, burning clock with 1.56 to go. They don't want to score too quickly. Maybe another couple seconds here. Score at 150 and 148, close enough. 40-34, Ryan Ingleby coming down. A lot, of, a lot of teams will play a balanced line, and some teams will play a power line. And we'll talk about those as we go on here is what those terms mean. Peterson locked down by Bob Lahano in the back, that four, keeping his chair sedentary. And a turnover. That was a, a time violation turnover, even though Jake Daly was hustling in to get that ball and knock it aside. So now Bob on the sidelines. Knocks it in. The clock has not started yet. Now it does when Zion picks up the ball. And now they're going to burn as much time as they possibly can here at the end of the third period. Again, Eric... Every team, Wassa needs to take the same philosophy of getting the last point in a period and the first point in the next period. But right now, it's all Lakeshore's ball, 41-34. Minute 15 to go. Lakeshore has their, their offense set up to be able to violate the key, and here they go. You'll see them push and pull. Who goes which way? Who goes left? Who goes right? Ben Tomlinson locking it down on the right side of the key. And we have a foul. Let's see what's going to happen here. I did not see who the call was on. It was against Wassa. Bob Lahano comes out to inbound the ball. Bob to Zion. One minute to go. 12 seconds on the play clock. Reddington forces it in with eight seconds to go on the play clock. 54 seconds to go on the clock. Steady Eddie and the morale. His nickname is Canada. <laughs> so Canada still has the ball. Shaggy's trying to get loose. And Wassa has to call a timeout strategically in order to maintain possession. Their 12 seconds was almost up. One of the things here at uh, Lakeshore that's new is the Sports Science and Performance Center. It's something they've been working on for quite a while. If you imagine the greatest technology and the greatest philosophy 
um, c coming together for training high capacity um, athletes. That's what we have now in a number of rooms here at the Sports Science and Performance Center at Lakeshore Foundation. If you're ever here at Birmingham, um, you may want to check that out and find out more information. There's great information, including three videos uh, online that uh, really go into great detail uh, about the Sports Science and Performance Center. Um, steady Eddie calls for the inbound play. So number eight for Wassa comes down and to inbound the ball. Bob's got Ryan locked down. Jake Daly's trying to stay in. Um, ah, and we have a blown tube. Travis Morale for Wassa. So clock will stop. Here comes the pit crew from Wassa over to swap out Travis's wheel. And they'll change that tire out here as well. Wassa will have to inbound the ball. Sometimes these problems happen at the most inopportune times. Um, you're driving and now you've, you've got it. Now you, a lot of times they can choose to continue to play, especially if it happened in the backcourt or something along those lines. But in a lot of ways, you're stuck when it happens and you've got to reset for the play moving forward. So we're back in. Travis Morales driving with the ball. Almost a hit from Zion. Zion pulled back a little bit uh, to uh, kind of ball into Kyle Peterson for the try. 30 seconds left. So the shot clock is now off. Lakeshore will try for the last score of the period. Lahano to Daly. Zion is now loose. Ben Tomlinson is locked down. Steady Eddie for Wassa over in the corner. Morale comes in and knocks him loose, trying to get more defensive power available in the key. Zion's looking for a hole. Rocked down by Ingleby. Now he's backwards. You can't cross the goal line backwards. I don't know if we've seen this yet in this, this uh, game so far. And uh, that's a cool situation right there. All these guys holding these strong, strong guys in their uh, chairs, holding each other in place. And Zion comes in from behind Jake Daly and pounds on him to knock it loose so uh, he can score. 4.2 seconds left. And everybody's jockeying for position. Peterson finally calls for the inbound. And uh, now Lakeshore is in key defense. And the try doesn't quite get there. Peterson is not able to Zion. Zion's not able to sprint the length of the court to score one more time. But Lakeshore was successful in preventing Wassa from getting the last of the period. So now it's 43-35 uh, for our two-minute period between the quarters here uh, at Lakeshore Foundation in the field house at the United States Olympic and Paralympic training site in Birmingham, Alabama. Nothing is possible at Lakeshore without the generosity of, of the donors and those uh, the members who participate here at Lakeshore. If you would love to contribute to the mission of Lakeshore, uh, come to lakeshore.org slash give. That's lakeshore.org slash give. Or you can come to lakeshore.org and on the homepage in the upper hand corner, you'll see a red box. Uh, and uh, clicking on that, the give button, and uh, you'll be able to donate to, uh, to the Lakeshore Foundation. We sure do appreciate your support. Um, uh, maintaining uh, the facility is certainly a part of it, but the heart of Lakeshore Foundation is serving uh, those uh, here who come to the programs. I've, I've had the privilege of coming into this field house numerous times over the last decade, and I can tell you uh, it's, uh, it's such a joy to see um, uh, military veterans uh, talking to little kids uh, around the track uh, or uh, helping each other around the pool. The spectrum of help that Lakeshore Foundation offers is absolutely incredible. So we've seen some more folks uh, spray off on the sidelines. Got a couple of uh, uh, lineup switches on the Wassa side. Wassa comes back in. Travis getting a little bit more doused down before he comes back in. Steady Eddie is headed to the bench. Marty Ewing back in. And Travis Morale back on the court. I don't have a score sheet in front of me, but I think Travis has played every minute of this game. Uh, as has Zion Reddington on the other side of the ball for Lakeshore. 
So Ryan Ellison, number six, is coming into the game, the bearded fellow. He plays. He has played uh, wheelchair basketball at a high level for the University of Alabama, including a national championship. Here comes Wassa. Zion is trying to keep them to the right side of the court. Peterson coming around the other side. There's Zion again to, to meet him. Nobody prevented Zion from getting through. Travis Morale with the ball with a wide open key. Can't Jake Daly get there? And have a penalty. We find out. Oh, looks like Zion Reddington is headed to the penalty box here for. Uh, and now Wasa will inbound the ball. And again, um, Zion has to stay in the penalty box for the full time. So how's Wasa going to play here? Wasa is going to burn some time off the clock. To keep, travel, to keep Zion out of the game. And they do score in 13 seconds. So they didn't burn the entire time on the clock. Of course, Wassa needs time. They've got to have it in order to uh, um, uh, gain that score back. Reddington to Ellison. Um, and uh, we've got to sit, sit in the game as well. Jake Daly to Zion. He's on the outside and Zion scores. Wasa coming in. It's Marty Ewing, Ewing to inbound. And the ball was passed and right back to Peterson. Morales got the ball locked down by Jake Daly deep in the court, but a wide open Ingle Beast to take it in for the try. Number six, Ryan with the ball. Looking for the inbound. Clock is stopped, seven minutes. Inbound to Jake Daly. Jake to Zion on a fast break. And everybody just goes, uh, and Zion goes down to score. Zion's burning a couple seconds. Crosses for the try. Again, right now, Watts is trying to lock them down, trying some defensive positions. And when those get broken down, it turns into a play. And everybody just resets, takes a deep breath, comes back around again. And so Ryan Eliason uh, is kind of, I don't know if he feels like a fish out of water and he's been in the south for so long here in Alabama, but uh, he's from Green Bay, Wisconsin, and uh, up in the neck of the woods uh, for uh, the guys for, uh, for Wassa C-K-R-I. And Wassa has forced turnover. Charles Brown picks up the ball and scores. Ball got loose on the floor. If you get a chance, if you see another loose ball in the game, watch how these players pick the ball up. They squeeze the ball against the wheel, and they allow the wheel to bring the ball up into their laps. It's very, very cool the way that ball is picked up. Simple pass to Jake Daly. Marty went alongside of him, but uh, Jake's going to score for the try. 6.08 left in the period. Behind me, the game for third place has gotten tighter. KC Revolution has come back and taken a one-point lead with 7.25 left in the game for third place. Big pass to Travis Morale, and Travis scores the try. Ryan Elias comes in for the inbound pass. And I want to apologize to Ryan for missing a, his name a little while ago. Ryan into Zion. Zion coming up the court, stopped by Shaggy. Marty tries to get a hand in on it. So does the Ingle Beast. And Ryan comes around the side from the inbound pass and scores the try on a pass from Zion Reddington. Uh, one of the, the stats that's kept in wheelchair rugby, just like in basketball or wheelchair basketball, is the assist, the ever important assist. And uh, so uh, don't have this, a stat sheet in front of me here. Uh, but know that there have been many assists in this game. Travis wishing there had been a, um, a foul on that one. There wasn't. Touches the ball in the backcourt and is called for over and back, similar to um, a basketball call. A um, backcourt violation would be the actual the, uh, technical name for that. Lakeshore is setting up their offense, burning some time on the clock. So they've got three weighted to the left, Sid to the right, Ryan and Jake 
now fade over to the right hand side. So Zion will be driving from the left hand side. We'll see which, which side they're pushing and pulling from this time. And they're pulling from the right, pushing to the left. And there goes Zion around the edge to score the try. 47, 48, 40 with 4.56 to go here at the Fieldhouse at Lakeshore Foundation in Birmingham, Alabama. I'm very grateful to be calling the game today here at the Eastern Semifinals. Uh, a friend of mine sent me a text this morning laughing that uh, my first time calling a full game in an official capacity is on the last day that Vern Lundquist calls his last Masters tournament. So someday, maybe, just maybe, that will be the answer to the trivia question. The ball bounced around a little bit, but Marty Ewing was able to pick it up for the try for Wassa. Ryan inbounds to Sid Christian. Sid right back to Ryan. Ryan pass to Zion. Zion's got Jake Daly open on the left-hand side, a little lob pass over. Jake picks it up and decides, yeah, let's burn a couple seconds off the clock. And then scores. Ball's inbound for Wassa. Travis has the ball and he's loose. He's gonna push up court. Pushes around Ryan, passes out to Marty Ewing. Deep on the court and Marty scores. Ryan into Zion. Zion around the side. Reddington triple teamed in the backcourt. Puts open a pass. Oh, and it's, who's it? Yep, that was a turnover, courtesy of Lakeshore back to Wassa. We have some substitutions coming in. Steady Eddie is coming back on the court. Marty Ewing is headed off the court for Wassa. The bench is not stirred on the Lakeshore side. We'll see if, uh, the final couple of players who haven't played today will play for us. Amy is one of them. So a five-time Paralympic medalist in swimming. Hasn't been in yet today. Michael Ballou hasn't been in in this game. Michael's played some in the past games. Michael, a veteran of the United States Air Force. And Wassa turns the ball over. The ball is kind of bouncing around a little bit between tires and hands. Zion was able to pick it up, scoop it up, get across midcourt and then toss it to Jake Daly. Everybody's taking a breath. See if anybody pushes Jake over the line. Uh, Jake takes their score. Peterson thought about it. The game behind me for third place is uh, taking a, a, an interesting turn. KC Revolution is now up by four with five minutes to go in the fourth period. The flags here at Lakeshore, as I mentioned at the beginning of our webcast, are a very important component. You see them as soon as you walk into the field house, they represent every country that's had the privilege of coming and competing here uh, at Lakeshore. And you'll see flags from all over the place. We look over here to one side and, and see the flag for Israel. And we remember, um, think about what's happening there right now and uh, our thoughts. Uh, or with that conflict where that is headed. You see the flags for everything from Great Britain to Canada to Australia, France, Germany, Switzerland, and many, many flags that I knew as a younger man but have forgotten the shapes and colors of now. It's a beautiful sight. At the other end of the field house are a set of green banners uh, showing all of the teams, including the five-time national championships that the Lakeshore Demolition have won um, as a rugby team as part of the USWRA. And in case you've been a little bit confused, there are teams all across the U.S. that are part of the USWRA, the U.S. Wheelchair Rugby Association, and then there is our national team. So imagine, if you think back to uh, the 1980 U.S. Olympic hockey team, all those kids on that, that team played on different colleges and then came together for uh, that hockey team. In the same way, uh, our, uh, our U.S. national team is drawn from teams all across the country. Uh, and so we were also privileged to play against, so, oh, wow, big time hold by Jake Daly, grabbing a hold of the ball from Travis Morales. Travis comes by. <laughs> they were laughing about it, but uh, that, was a, that, was a, that was a big foul. So Jake with a big smile on his face and his top knot comes over here to the penalty box and Wassa will have a power play 
see how they, they take it here. With uh, time's running out for Wasso, 247 left uh, to make up the, the nine tries here uh, in the finals of the Eastern semifinals. So steady Eddie into Shaggy, Shaggy to Canada. Canada looking for what to do. Canada out to the Eagle Beast with a fast break and crosses the line. Daly calls for the inbound play. Makes his way to the to the other end of the court. I want to say thanks today to our officials, Marianne Duda and Dan Plax. They're two of the most um, uh, successful and polished officials uh, in the USWRA. Marianne is a trainer and an evaluator for the officials and has a phenomenal sense of humor. She's so much fun uh, to be around. Um, I remember being at um, the national championships a few years ago, uh, sponsored by Oscar Mike, one of the teams that's going to make it to the nationals this year. Uh, when Dan was learning, who had just come on board uh, as an official, um, and I remember uh, watching him ask questions of uh, one of the head officials um, and of evaluators here, Bob Lopez, who's been the integral part uh, to wheelchair rugby for years. And, and, and uh, Dan was just so full of energy about the sport and questions and situations and all kinds of things. It's so fun to see him now as a, a senior official in the sport and getting the opportunity and the privilege of, of calling this game. And uh, Michael Ballou is in the game for Lakeshore, number nine. Like I said, a veteran of the United States Air Force. Um, Michael's a newlywed, and uh, um, some bring so much energy to the team. Zion gives Shaggy a run for, uh, run for this money. And he's able to score. 52-44, 209 left in the game. Again, when you get around two minutes, you start getting some um, some clock management techniques going in. So will they be employed, or will just everybody play all out here? Ball bounced around a little bit, but Zion was able to tap it to himself. Sprints down, gets it with about five yards to go before the line, kills a couple seconds, and scores the try. Inglebeast coming in for the inbound play, number 15, with that kinesiology tape uh, on his uh, shoulder and his neck. Morale coming down the court and a wide open pass for the breakaway to Peterson for the score. I also want to give a great shout out to all of our volunteers. If you've seen the volunteers in purple shirts around the field house, uh, Lakeshore would not be uh, possible without the support of our volunteers. Uh, if, you, if you get a chance to see the scorer's table as we pan past it, as the ball comes up court for Lakeshore, you'll notice a, a, a woman sitting on the right-hand side of that scorer's table. She is a faithful volunteer with the wheelchair rugby team here at Lakeshore and comes out um, every Monday night and is here to help, um, help the players with whatever they need. Um, and she's got a great, bright smile and personality um, and so grateful for her commitment to the wheelchair rugby program here at Lakeshore. Zion got roughed up a little bit in there, no foul. Comes across for the try. They're laughing about it together on the other side of the court. Morale has the ball, trying to get around Sid. Sid does a great job of bumping uh, Ingleby into Morale. Morale's able to get the outbound pass and a try for Wassa. Ryan Eliason now at the line for the inbound for Lakeshore. Into Michael Ballou. Michael came around. Michael had the privilege of being invited to the a selection camp for Team USA this last year. There were about 36 players invited. 16 were chosen for Team USA. Oh! Zion bobbled the ball, but was able to save it from a turnover. Passes it back to Ryan. Ryan's able to score the try. We're under a minute here at Lakeshore Foundation for the Eastern Semifinal for 2024. Let's go over the teams that are going to be coming to Tampa in a couple of weeks from the East. Uh, unless something collapses here in the last 50 seconds, Lakeshore will be the champions. Wassa, Brooks, KC, McGee, all those teams will be playing. McGee's from Philadelphia, KC from Kansas City, uh, the Brooks Bandits, Charlotte, North Carolina. From the west side, the champions, the NEP, 
crew from New Hampshire, University of Michigan, one of the two university campuses that has a team associated with it. They're both community teams, but are sponsored by the University of Michigan. Also, the uh, University of Arizona has a team that's making it in with a bye. Uh, the WWAR Warriors out of Tampa, they'll be hosting the tournament there. Oscar Mike, Portland, WWAR Generals, the other team from Tampa that's helping sponsor. Texas Stampede, a Bill B360. I mentioned the University of Arizona. Uh, team out of another team out of Texas, the TIRR Texans, the Boise Bombers, the St. Louis Bombers, and High Five Storm are going to round out what's happening um, um, at the national tournament for the United States Wheelchair Rugby Association in Tampa coming up in a couple of weeks. Six seconds, five seconds, and they push them off the court so Zion gets the final try for Lakeshore. Loss has 3.1 seconds to. Uh, to score here at the end of the game. Lakeshore is going all the way back to key defense. Wassa holds on to the ball to finish. So thank you for joining this webcast of the finals for the 2024 Eastern Semifinals for the United States Wheelchair Rugby Association at the Fieldhouse at Lakeshore Foundation in Birmingham, Alabama. My name is Mark Whitlock. On behalf of the entire team here uh, at Lakeshore and other volunteers like me, uh, thank you for being a part of this webcast. And again, Lakeshore would not be possible without help from folks like you. So visit lakeshore.org. That's lakeshore.org slash give or hit that homepage and hit the red button in the top of the page.